Sravyang. Good afternoon, all. Today, I'm presenting this work, which is focused on paleohydrology of small rivers or seasonal ephemeral rivers. So when I say paleohydrology, uh, it's a broader term. My focus is on identifying the discharge of small rivers. So it's a very simple work, but I hope I can make it interesting. So I will start with what is a large river? How to identify when we say it is a large river? So based on uh, global data of uh, around 38 large rivers, somehow it is defined. So I, I don't know how these numbers arrived at, but uh, this is the definition of large river in terms of parameters like area, length, and discharge. So, and why it is important is because such large rivers globally transport 19 billion tons of sediment each year. So, on this slide, I want you to remember this, um, uh, this value, discharge 7,500 meter cube per second. And uh, since our focus is uh, Indus civilization, let me take you to this reason in the next slide. So this, this shows major urban civilization of world near the large rivers, e Egyptian near Nile, Mesopotamia near Tigris, and Harappan or Indus civilization near the Indus River. So these are all the ma major urban civilization of third millennium BC. I will move to, so with this notion that uh, major civilization near the large river, we can make a general notion that to foster a river valley civilization, surface water resources could be readily provided by large river in comparison to small ephemeral or seasonal rivers. Talking about these major civilizations which uh, declined around second millennium BC, most of these civilization declined and this was related to drying of these large rivers. Next, I will focus on this Harappan civilization. L let's look into this uh, in terms of what rivers were available during that time. So uh, on this map, I'm first showing all the large rivers if the, on this Indus region, which mainly comprises of Indus and its tributaries, Satluj, Bias, Ravi, Chenab, and Jhelum. On, on the other side, eastern side, there are Ganga and Yamuna rivers. Now, look, let's see what are the small rivers available in this region. It's mainly the Ghaggar system, which has major tributary Markanda and Chotang. Chotang is uh, another tributary that meets uh, Ghaggar around this region near Suratgarh. But somehow I draw it uh, because it's mostly flowing in this region only at the moment. Now, if we try to plot major sites over this map, what we see is that major Harappan sites, the Harappa and Mohenjo-daro, for example, are located near the large, large river. Modern time, these are large rivers, Ravi and Indus. But in Indian context, the uh, major sites are located along these small rivers. So major sites are Kalibanga, Banavali, Birhana, Rakhigadi, these are the major sites. And this leads to a puzzle that human river relation become complex in the case of Harappan civilization as evidence from the distribution of its sites along both the large and small rivers. Now consequently, can I get rid of this? So consequently, uh, as evidence from uh, its various studies through field surveys, and what I'm showing here are paleo channels that have been marked and these paleo channels were marked in 1980 by Yashpal et al. That's the famous paper. So this is the paleo Satluj branch. And it was proposed that Satluj was flowing through this paleo channel. And again, these three lines showing Yamna, that Yamna was flowing and together they were uh, making a large river, which has often been related with uh, Saraswati river of Indian literature. But for the sake of uh, nomenclature, I'm considering this paleo channel system as Ghaggar Hakra paleo channel system. So once the, these both these uh, major paleo channel uh, joins here, uh, we will call it Ghaggar Hakra paleo channel. So again, I will overlap 
small rivers on this and somehow control is going. Okay, so now we can see the existing large rivers, the paleo channels, and the existing small rivers. And I raised the question, which rivers were water sources to the Harappan civilization? And when I raised the question, then I propose a hypothesis that I need to understand hydrology of all these river systems. So I say it is important to reconstruct paleohydrology of Ghakarhakra river system to assess availability of water during the time of past civilization. And so we studied this on ephemeral river Markanda. Now very obvious question, why not Ghagar itself? Why we chose Markanda? So another reason for that is that Markanda is in close proximity to this uh, catchment area of Yamna River. And there is a hypothesis that this paleo channel of Yamna uh, was linked to the Yamna catchment through this Markanda uh, Valley. So we, we thought that it would be more interesting to look into this river rather than looking into the Ghagar system, it's a Ghag, main Ghagar river itself. Okay, so now I'm moving into hydrology of the system. So when we start looking into hydrology, uh, first thing is to look into the modern hydrology itself, how the modern hydrology looks like. So it is uh, unfortunately very difficult to find observed data for even the larger rivers, let alone the small rivers. But uh, fortunately, we found at least uh, annual data of uh, discharge for Markanda River. This is taken from Brahm Prakash paper. Sorry for uh, not citing this appropriately. So what we have is uh, at least uh, one year data for 1997 and 98. So when we plot this uh, discharge amount, this is the plot looks like, but we want to look at it into terms of flow rates. So I translated it into from amount of discharge to rate of discharge. So this is how it looks like. And what we, we can do, what we wanted is to have more data on this. So for our rescue, it's the SWOT model, the soil and water analysis tool. What we did is that we used this observed data to calibrate SWOT model. And then we came up with this model discharge data that show a good, good, uh, uh, good correlation with this observed data. That means our model was quite well calibrated. And then we uh, related it with the existing data of precipitation. So these black line here shows precipitation. So there is a good agreement in all those three. And that allowed us to ex uh, expand our model data of discharge. So we uh, generated or simulated data for at least uh, 38 years. And when we got this observed data, so we can use this observed values frequency to predict 100 year return period flood. So it's all in modern system. So what we had is uh, actual observed data, we modeled it, uh, to find more uh, discharge data and then to find 100 year return period flood. So I will try to summarize in between. So far, what I've shown you is that modern Markanda river had 22 meter cube per second of discharge. If in this river system, there is a 100 year flood. So 100 year flood means that has a probability of occurrence 0.01. Uh, so that discharge would be 300 meter cube per second. Now our interest is to know what was the discharge during the time of Harappan civilization. That, that means we are going, we want to know paleo discharge. So let me take you to the field. Again, for your reference, this is the whole river system that I showed earlier. This is the Markanda River Valley here. And again, this map is showing a closer view so I can show you, this is the Markanda River origin. It flows through this, this uh, line represents mountain front. And again, as I mentioned before, Markanda is separated by a small drainage divide. So this is Bata River that goes into Yamna system. So there is a very small drainage divide in between. Oops. Okay. 
So for paleo discharge, we went into the field and these are the major study windows, uh, Contra and Kalam, where we find some interesting stratigraphy along the river cut section. So in next slide, I will be showing field photographs from these two study windows of Markanda River. Okay, again for your reference, this is the map here. These top two photographs shows this location. This is a, a view of a cliff section where very obviously if we look closer into this, they, these are the Shivalik bedrocks and we will expect to see gravelly deposits in a Himalayan river system. But what is more uh, uh, interesting is that it is overlain by some finer sediment deposits. Again, if we move downstream along Markanda near this Kalam, we see this road section, which very nicely exposes the similar sequence, uh, bedrock shivaliks overlain by gravel deposits, and these are muddy deposits. So we identified these as paleo flood deposits because it's very rare to, uh, to see such finer sediments in Himalayan system, a Himalayan river system. And next task was to know what was the river discharge when these paleo when this river was flooding and these deposits were uh, deposited, these sediments were deposited here. So for that, we created uh, this cross section at Con uh, Contra village near this. Uh, uh, so what I'm showing is this location. This is the cross section. These are terrace levels, T1, T2, T3, T4 and this is T5, and this orange layer here, it represents the paleo flood deposit. So basically, uh, when there was flood in the past, this level was at this, uh, river stage was at this high elevation, and these deposits were crea created here. Okay. And in order to find what was the discharge when the stage was at this elevation, we used Manning's equation, which basically used cross-section area and flow velocity. So discharge is a product of velocity into area. So basically this whole area was calculated and flow velocity was estimated using these parameters, uh, hydraulic radius and channel slope. And we identified this 4.6 uh, uh, cubic, of. Uh, 4,600 meter cube per second discharge for this Markanda River. And if I can talk in terms of time, so as I shown here, these paleo flood deposits were 3.8 or 3.9 kilo year. There was another deposit which was 3.9 kilo year. So again, I will come to this summary map figure. And as I already showed, this was the modern discharge. This was 100 year flooding discharge. And if I add paleo discharge of Markanda, so this was 4,600 meter cube per second. And with you want to see it in reference to the large river. So I will add this figure 7,500, which is a modern large river discharge. So of course this paleo discharge is not matching with it. We don't even expect it to match it. It is nearly two third of this. And what, and if you look into the timing, this is stronger hydro, so this, this discharge, basic paleo discharge basically represents a stronger hydrology of Markanda river at 3.9 kilo years. Now, what is its implication? So if you look into the distribution of Harappan sites, how Harappan sites distributed along these channels during those time. So basically this time coincides with the, the phase of mature to late Harappan, when the sites were, the distribution of sites along these channel moving eastward towards the mountain. And what we propose finally in conclusion is that paleoflood deposits in these small rivers are a good archive of paleohydrology of small rivers. Peak discharge of paleo flooding around 3.9 kilo year was order of magnitude higher than the modern discharge. And possibly these larger floodings represent a different kind of hydrological regime of these rivers 
that was there during the time of Harappan civilization that possibly sustained this civilization. And finally, I want to thank Professor Danino and Professor Prabhakar for this opportunity and the financial grant for this project was through uh, R&D ITGN and this was the publication that we came, uh, came out with this. Thank you. <laughs>